So, Go ahead. so <laughs> it generates an electric signal. Okay. And, and it flip that off. Okay. So the operator knows that this is uh, somebody who wants to make a call. Mm -hmm. And it's it's actually called a magneto bullseye because this is like a eyeball <coughs> rolling over, right? Okay. So the operator would jack in and say, uh, you know, operator, can I help you? So the person would say, well, I want to talk to the doctor or whomever, right? Right. So then the operator would take in, oh, she jacked into the doctor and then ring the phone. Let's see if this works. You almost hear it. It's not ringing as good as it should. Let's see. Okay, you hear that one? Yeah. So they would ring that party and then the other party, you know, would answer. So now, at this point, the operator has a decision to make. So does she stay and listen to the call, or does she go about her business? And usually, if there's nothing else to do, she's going to listen to the call. When right. I say she, because the first operators were men, and they were terrible. And they would come in late, they'd be hungover, they'd want smoke breaks all the time, and they were rude and obnoxious, basically. So they quickly changed to women. And they also found customers like talking to a woman better. They felt their voice was more so they calm helpful. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, she might be listening. Now, where it kind of gets interesting is what happens when all the jacks get full? What do you do? you got to add another board. So this, this set of panels here, this set of jacks, was reserved for what are called trunks. And trunks tie switches together. This is a switch, even though it's somebody has to operate it, it's a switch, right? You, you switch it in and you make a connection. So, if, if Bob over there wanted to talk to somebody who was on a different cord board, I'd plug into the trunk and I'd ring the operator now, if it's right next to me, I might just slide the chair over. Right, plug it but in. But if it's four down, I'm going to ring the operator and say, hey, I've got a call for you, and then they would plug it in. So you'd have, you'd be going from the phone to the jack. Now, this cord goes down in here, and it's on a weight, comes back in here. It's just one cord. And then that would connect to the other board through that trunk. And then that operator would connect to the far end. And this jack panel is connected to all the other last panels in all the other boards. They're all common. So when you plug into it, she's going to plug into it. One of those is going to see it light up, and whoever's first to pick it up is going to be who picks it up. Now, if they're not the right one, they're gonna... and a lot of times they'd say, you know, Betty, pick up, because they knew it was on in that position. But where it gets interesting, what if they got a call in New York? There's no trunk from here to New York, right? So, they're going to ring the Sacramento operator and say, hey, we've got a call for New York. And Sacramento would be like, okay. So they'd ring Reno. Reno's going to ring Salt Lake City, Salt Lake, Denver. Denver to uh, Chicago, Chicago to Columbus, Columbus to Brooklyn, finally. You know, you might have 10 of these boards tied up. It could take 10, 15 minutes to set this call up and they ring and nobody answers. <laughs> okay, so that would, could take up 10 or 12 of these boards, right? Now, until the customer answers, no billing starts. Once the customer says hello, then the billing starts and it's you pay for three minutes minimum and then one minute durations after that and the next minute starts after six seconds. So if you talk for three minutes and three seconds, you only get billed for three minutes. If you talk for three minutes and seven seconds, you're going to get billed for four minutes. And this is a bill. This is actually so... So when, when the operator would start this call, she would take one of these little pieces of paper, she'd stick it in this clock, 
and she hit the start. And then let me show you what happens when the uh, when the collar gets done. So when the collar gets done, and you you watch this board, it should work. The collar gets done, they turn the magneto. See that red ball right there? That tells the operator that this cord position right here, number four, is done. So she unplugs it, and she'd come over to her little thing, and in slot four would be a ticket, and then she'd take the clock that she had started the call, and she'd slide it in and, and stamp it in the call. And this is what the ticket looks like. Um, now, are you from around here? Oh, hi Andy, how you doing today? How's the wife and kid? You know, back they know who it was, especially when it was small. When you had eight positions, it was a little more difficult. But um, the operators also could memorize phone numbers like I could never believe. Some of them should have been scientists or something. I mean, they could remember literally three or four hundred numbers of uh, businesses, hospital. You know. When you called 411 and asked, and I'm getting a little off this, but, and asked for the water company, or, they didn't look it up. They just rattled it off. I used to work on the equipment, so I, I would see this going on, right? And it was amazing. But back to this, so the one problem with this, well, obviously there's a lot of issues, but one problem that irritated this man was that if I had a business and you had a business, we had the same type of service we offered. And I came over to the operator and said, hey, whenever somebody calls for a tailor, you send them to me, I give you five bucks a month. Wow. Well, they would do it. And that's what happened outside of uh, Chicago. This guy was a mortician and he wasn't getting any business and he couldn't figure it out. And he finally figured it out and he's thought, I've got to stop this. And he developed the direct dial system, which of course made his mortician business seem like nothing. How he came up with this thing is, I mean, he was a true genius because we'll walk over there yeah. and we call the step-by-step -step system. And these are all just um, little switchboards for like the uh, answering service, fire department, the school, things like that. So this step-by-step -step system, and there's a little, this almond Stroger. In fact, these are called Stroger step-by-step -step switching systems named after him. And they're um, very ingenious for the time they were developed. Now, the problem with them is there's a ton of moving parts, right? So you got all these relays that move, all these contacts, you got these little cords that are moving all the time, you know, every time people dial. So these cords break. These little metal, they're called wipers, and they're wiping across contacts, so they wear holes right through them. And there's a lot of maintenance. We had like 32 people working on these. Now there's, I think there's two guys that work on the in hundreds. Floors of them. This is one aisle on the first floor. And, I mean, there was two floors to the building just full of these switches. And mind you, when, you know, you're, you hear this, right? Imagine that times 10,000. When I walked in, I couldn't stand it. I had to wear earplugs. The guys who had been there during the transition, they got used to it because there was just, you know, maybe 100 of these and then 200, 300, and so on. But for me, I couldn't take it. So, we'll go through a call. <coughs> oh, sorry. These are the switches. This is the ringing interrupter, and this is the ringing machine. So you have an interrupter, because otherwise when your phone rings, you just go ring, you never stop, right? And then this is just for recorded announcements. So that's what we got going here. So, in this system, when you pick up the phone, it's not like your iPhone. It's very important that you hear a dial tone. Because if you don't hear a dial tone, you're not going to make a call. And one thing to understand is this row of switches, these are line finders. 
every customer is hooked to a lane finder. How you're connected to those, because there's 10 in a group, so there could be 10. And every time you came off hook, you'd get down to them. But then the phone company would spend a ton of money on line finders that sat there 90% of the time, right? So they would say, well, we think we could put 50 on there. And maybe 60. And it depended on the area, believe it or not. There was a geography where downtown Vernon Street, you couldn't do that, right? Because there are a lot of businesses. So you could only put 20 on there. But way out by baseline roads, you, you could put 90 on there sometimes. And they would put little counters on so that every time you came off hook and didn't get a dial tone and trigger the counter, and if it exceeded four or five, they would move people to different line finder groups. So they that was the traffic department would manage it. So I get my dial tone, this is a line finder. I've got it, so I start dialing. And this is my first selector. And all my first selector is doing is trying to get me down to these connectors. Because every line finder connects to a customer, every connector contact connects to a customer. And so it's trying to get me out to that connector so I can get to that customer. So I've got through my first selector, my second selector, my third. Uh -oh. Let's start over. First selector, second selector, third selector, fourth selector. Now you see, every one of them stops at the first contact. Why? Because we know they're called, so I'm going to hit the first available out. Now I'm going to dial. Oh, look, the connector went up four, but it sat there. It didn't move over, right? Because it doesn't know where to go. So now when I tell it, now it went over four. Now, if you answer, Hello? now, this is pretty clear, right? You can hear me pretty well. I mean, the quality of a call on the system is not really good. On that system, you weren't really, you had to yell. So, did you ever watch Andy Griffith? Okay. Well, when you watch Andy Griffith, he was yelling in the phone. Not because you had to yell in the phone. He actually had to experience actually making calls on those phones. Really. It doesn't degrade much. It's just that the uh, mica and the little transmitters and receivers just were not of real high quality. Uh, they didn't flex enough. The more flexing you can do, the lower your um, voice tone has to be, so the sound wave doesn't have to be so large. Those did not flex much, so you had to really talk loud. So that was the call. Now, like I said, the maintenance on these was really difficult. This allows me to busy it out in case something's wrong with it. I don't have time to fix it. I'm going to do that, and then I can come back later. These pull right out, and you can set them on a stand, and you can clean everything and test everything and replace whatever you need to do, and then just jack it back in, and, and you close the button back in, and, and it's good to go. Uh, now, one of the biggest problems was these when I later in my career here was uh, traces. So today, every call that gets made is recorded. I mean, there's a record. I don't know if they tell you that, but there is. And they can go back at any date and time, any phone number, and tell you, oh, yeah, they made this call with this number. You couldn't do that with this, right? So we used to put these devices in. And it was kind of interesting because we got a call from the high school saying, hey, there's a bomb threat, you know, we're getting one every couple of weeks. And it was just kids who didn't do their term paper, I don't know what it was. <coughs> Excuse me. So we got some of these and we put them in to the police department and the schools. And sure enough, what happened is when you called the school, they would not hang up. By them not hanging up, you couldn't hang up. So they would, they would leave the phone off the hook, and they'd get another phone, call us, 
the police, we call the police, the police would say, go ahead, do the trace. And then we tell the police, okay, we traced it to this address. They'd drive over there, and if they picked the phone up at your house and got to the school secretary, you're, you're toast. So after we did that two or three times, <laughs> there was no more bomb threats. Right. Because <laughs> the kids knew, uh-oh, they can catch us now. Um, or um, yeah, that's what the general term is for doing a trace. Um, but the other problem with these, so imagine, you, you see these switches are all right here, right? But in the real world, they're in this big building, and sometimes the line finder and first selector are on the first floor, second selector's on the second floor. And third, so, so you're running up the stairs and then you're running down, you know, and I, I had to do this sometimes for somebody who's having a heart attack or a suicide. It's, it's like, and, and, and each time you get to one, you got to pull the prints out beside it and read the diagram. Oh, okay, this is where I got to go next and fold, you know, put it away. And sometimes you couldn't do it in time to save someone's life. And it was kind of depressing, actually. Um, so when the computer switches came along, it was much nicer. Boy, we... Digital? Yes. Yeah, that was the digital switch. Uh, so on the landlines, there's a separate database. So when you called 911, the phone company would collect your information and send it to this other database that the emergency uh, companies could see and know, oh, this is where we've got to go. There's still a lot of cell phones that don't have them today, which is why a lot of people keep their landlines. Um, you know, if you have coronary artery disease or something, recommend you have a landline. Although there is a company in Sacramento that just started up a home telephone service, 39 bucks a month, never to go up for 10 years, but I'm sure that's wireless. There, there's no way they could be using physical facilities. 10 years from now. There isn't there. Yeah. So, yeah. you know. Um, there's, there's, so you can dial like you can actually, there's a way to, to just, you heard it there. If you hit the right cadence, you can actually dial a number just with a hook switch. But it's very, very difficult. The one's not so bad, but the nine, you'd have to be a pro. Or it's just a fluke, right? So yeah, the hook switch will dial in one of these systems, but it has to be super precise. 